Hey everyone, it's Michael Dougal. I'm with the wonderful Brokerage EXP Realty and I sell residential real estate here in the greater Toronto area. And during this video, you're going to learn how to find deals in the residential market of the greater Toronto area. First things first, if you're unfamiliar with the market watch, I would highly advise you to take a look at this every month. Um, here's a little secret behind the real estate curtain. This is the one thing that every agent in Toronto really does pay attention to. I've been in a number of offices, I've worked with a lot of agents, and we're always really, really excited to see this information put out. It's typically put out the first week of every month. So here's what's really neat. It gives you a nice highlight of the market. We can see here that in September 2020, the average price was 960,000 up by 14% year over year and similarly that the number of sales was 11,083 in the greater Toronto area. So here's what's neat when you take a look at see full report you are able to see a complete breakdown of all the particular cities here in the greater Toronto area from um, uh, Toronto region, York region, Durham region, Halton, Peel, uh, Dufferin County, Simcoe County. And for the record, the way in which we are defining deal throughout this video is properties that are below market value or properties that have a good likelihood of selling for a higher price next year. So I'll show you a step-by-step -step process. Um, if you haven't yet subscribed, then do click subscribe, click like, and I'm looking for business if you know anyone looking to buy or sell. And on your YouTube screen, if you look at the description box below, you will find timestamps where you can simply click a timestamp and it will forward you to that part of the video or rewind you back to that part of the video. So feel free to use that as a table of contents. So we're looking at the market watch now specifically, let's talk about finding deals post COVID. So which type of properties have maybe decreased in value after the pandemic or after the first wave? Now we're somewhat in the second wave, it's October, 2020. So what I would do is I would take the market watch of September, 2020, and then I would compare it to the market watch of February, 2020, as that was just before you can say the, f the first wave here in the greater Toronto area with respect to the lockdown. And there's a couple of ways that you can go about this. If you are an investor and you are willing to maybe travel a little bit, get out of your immediate area to find a good deal, then you would go in one direction. And if you're somebody that is really looking to find deals in their specific area and you're wondering, okay, our townhouse is good investments, our condos, our detached homes, our triplexes or our multiplexes, good type of deals, then you would take another direction here. Let's take a look with respect to somebody that is flexible on the area. What I would do if I was you is I would input all this data from September, 2020 into a spreadsheet and and put the February 2020 data into a spreadsheet as well. Take a look at the average price and find a way through an Excel formula just to look at the price differential and the average price across all areas. Now, surprisingly, prices actually haven't dropped in most areas. They've actually increased. So this will just give you an idea as far as which cities have experienced a less amount of appreciation, you can say, because some areas have maybe gone up by 10% since then, and some areas maybe have gone up by only 2% since then. So then once you have narrowed it down to a few cities or one city which does interest you based on the numbers, then you can dive a little bit deeper and further investigate the particular home styles and look at the appreciation or depreciation the same way in which you did the first time. So as you can see here, you can scroll down the market watch. This is really neat and look specifically at detached properties or semi-detached properties or condo townhomes or condo apartments. And that list does go on. They've even got linked homes here. So it's very, very specific. And this just makes for a great tool to see if there's appreciation or depreciation. Of course, do recognize that during this pandemic, the condo market is very different than the traditional freehold property. So a detached, semi-detached, maybe townhouse. Okay, now let's say that you know specifically which area you want to buy and you just want to recognize where the deal is and what style of property. Is it a condo or is it a detached home? Then you would look at that city specifically. So let's use an example like Vaughn. And we can see here at Vaughn, uh, for all home types in September, we can see the average price here. And then to which I showed you earlier about how to compare the data in uh, September or October versus February, then you would do the same thing, for example, like Vaughn detached homes, Vaughn semi-detached homes, townhouses, condos, etc. And you can see which areas have experienced the appreciation or depreciation, right? Now, this isn't necessarily gonna lead you to finding a specific deal, but it gives you a good idea as far as what to look for. And you can then consult with a real estate agent and say, you know, I'm noticing that properties are fairly low in this area compared to what they used to be. I'm wondering if you can find me a property and show me why it's below market value. And then of course I could help you from there. I would highly encourage you, listen to your real estate agent. Don't listen to the news, quite honestly. The news is what gets the information last. Real estate agents get it first. 
we're seeing specific areas softening a little bit, meaning that the days on market is increasing. Yet we're seeing that in some areas, the market is still very strong. As a matter of fact, the average price is at its highest this point throughout the whole course of the year. However, if you were to ask agents um, specifically before COVID during February, a lot of areas and a lot of style of homes were selling for the most amount of money in the least amount of time. So that's where we become a good resource. As uh, me, myself, I'm talking to 50, 60, sometimes 100 people every single day, trying to match buyers with sellers and getting deals done. Generally speaking though, um, post COVID, we're noticing that you're most likely to find deals with the condo market. I don't really mean those larger condos, those ones which are 1200 square feet or so. I mean the smaller ones, like the one bedrooms between 400 to 700 square feet, you can say. Uh, prices have dipped surprisingly in a lot of areas and they were so strong in the beginning of the year. I remember I was listing properties and there was 20, sometimes 30 offers on them, even if it was like a 450 square foot bachelor unit. So that's worth paying attention to. So why specifically is this happening? Well, there's three factors. If we look at the types of buyers who generally buy condos, they're uh, investors, there are people looking to downsize and they are first time buyers. With respect to investors, it's such that uh, the typical investor is a little bit cautious when it comes to investing in the condo market as there's volatility and nobody knows if it's gonna go up or down. And at the same time, it's not as easy to rent a particular unit as it used to be. Secondly, let's look about buyers that typically would downsize. Now, a lot of these buyers, they've maybe started working from home and working from home is such that you really appreciate and you start to make use of all that extra space and you figure maybe now is not the right time for a condo. Let's leave it until the time when we retire. And thirdly, let's look at the first time buyers. Maybe it's such that because the rental market and the rental prices have dipped a little bit that they're finding a way to still accommodate paying rent and they're holding off on that interest on buying a particular property at that time, maybe in a year or so when the market is more stable. Now, one of the biggest surprises for me personally is that you're actually able to still find deals with multiplex properties. So if you're unfamiliar with the multiplex, it's like a property in which there are a number of tenants there staying there all in a legal fashion, paying rent, and you're simply just managing the property and collecting rent payments. So you're able to find deals with these specific style of properties because what so is a lot of those owners of those properties are wanting to sell to put their money into another investment. So some of these investors, they have their eye on another piece of property which really interests them, whether it's another multiplex in a different area, maybe a piece of land, maybe even an investment outside of real estate. And they're thinking maybe we should cash out on this property before values potentially decrease. Let's get out of the deal and we're finding deals. And our investor buyers who are able to acquire these kind of properties, believe me, they are very happy. So I hope this information was helpful. If you haven't subscribed, then do subscribe. Click like for the almighty YouTube algorithm them, do comment below and I'm looking for partner agents. If you're looking for a broker's change to somehow increase your business, let me show you how. Call me. My number is 416-671-5218. And if you're a buyer looking for property and maybe realtor.ca is not really addressing your needs properly, then do visit my website, torontorealestatenow.com as you will likely find that a helpful resource. And I'll look forward to seeing you all next time. Hey everyone, it's Michael Dougal with eXp Real Estate and I'd like to introduce you to my newest listing. We're here on 53 Omag. It's by Weston and Wilson. And if you're looking for an updated house, believe me, this property is absolutely stunning. It's custom built, never been lived in before, over 3,600 square feet.